Hey guys, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and today it is all about the Genelec G3 speaker. Now, Genelec is a pro sound company. They're based in Finland where they have been designing and building their speakers since 1978. Now, the G3 is an active speaker and I don't really do that many active speakers so over the course of this review, I decided to compare it against a passive speaker, a highly regarded passive speaker. And that's really interesting, so please stick around for that. But the G3, let's get down to the basics here. The G3 is an active speaker, by amplified and the electronics, the two 50-watt Class D amplifiers stuffed inside this tiny little speaker are designed and made by Genelec in their factory, and so is the active crossover. And right out of the box, one of the things that I liked about this speaker and why I wanted to do this speaker, though I don't do many active speakers, is it is in all analog design. There's no digital connectivity in this speaker. There's no digital conversions going on inside this speaker. What goes in analog stays analog all the way through, and I like that a lot. The G3 is the middle model of the line that starts with the G1, there's G2, G3, G4, and G5. They get bigger and bigger as the number goes up. And I want it to be, you know, in the middle, the sweet spot maybe in the line. So that's what I went with. Now, one of the things that you notice right away when you're on their, on their site is it comes in three finishes. Black, of course, white, yeah, but also this one, raw which is raw, unfinished aluminum, because the G3's enclosure is cast aluminum. There's no MDF in this speaker. There's no plastic in this speaker. It is a metal enclosure, cast aluminum. And I think that that is definitely worth mentioning in big time. Now, connectivity could not be simpler. There's two inputs, RCA and XLR, analog inputs, no digital connectivity whatsoever. And the other thing that's not there is a volume control. There is no volume control on these speakers, um, meaning you have to use them with a preamplifier or a source like a DAC that has a volume control. The price, I've mentioned the price. The price is $795 each, not pair, $795 each in, in any of the three finishes. Well, on the back side, there's a set of tone controls that you can use to adjust the speaker to be used in different environments, such as a corner or on a shelf or a platform or a tabletop. Those are EQ curves that are built into the speaker that you can turn on and off with those, with those dip switches. Oh, one other number that's important, actually two, is the warranty. The warranty runs to two years, but it can be extended to five years when you register your purchase with Genelec. Some other numbers of importance are the driver sizes. The tweeter is a 0.75 inch aluminum dome. The woofer is a 5 inch polypropylene. The cabinet itself, that cast aluminum cabinet, is solid as a rock. It feels like a solid chunk of aluminum. It truly does because it's filled to the brim with electronics. I'll show you a picture, a cutaway of the inside. Now, actually, this isn't the G3, it's a somewhat larger uh, Genelec, but you get the idea of what's going on inside these speakers. It does not look a like a typical passive speaker, that's for sure. The exterior shape of the speaker, though I think it looks cool and modern and hip and everything, it's actually really all about functionality, which is a very low diffraction cabinet. There's no hard edges to the design. The waveguide around the tweeter is cast into the aluminum. It's a very uh, form follows function type of ethos going on here. And speaking of the design, it comes with this uh, isopod uh, footer assembly attached to the speaker, which is removable, by the way. But when you, when you place the speaker on a shelf or on a stand or something, that isolation platform isolates the vibrations coming from the speaker that might potentially go into the stand or shelf or whatever. And I think that's a nice, a nice feature to have. And it seems to work very, very well. And you can also use the isopod to angle the speaker uh, facing up or facing down. There's a lot of control over the vertical orientation of the speaker. 
the rest of the review system consisted of, well, two different preamplifiers I used over the course of the review, the Schitt Jotunheim and also the Pass Labs HPA1, which is a headphone amplifier, but I use it as a preamp. The digital source was an Oppo Blu-ray player. The analog source was the Technique's SL1200GR. And for the comparison with the passive speaker, well, the passive speaker was one of my favorite speakers of this year, the ELAC Unify Reference. And for an amplifier, with that, I used the Riga IO Integrated. Combined price of the Unify Reference and the Riga IO Integrated Amp is about $1,800. So a little bit more expensive than the G3, but enough, close enough for rock and roll. And the sound differences between those two systems, the G3 versus the Unify Reference Riga, pretty big. Pretty, pretty big. So in ways that I could have anticipated and in ways that, frankly, surprised me. I just want to state right up front, and I think some of you already know this about me, but I am drawn to speakers that have personalities, that are fun, that are exciting, and I don't really care that much, or much at all, about neutral, accurate speakers. It's just not really what I'm attracted to. But, <laughs> having said all that, I'm, I really enjoyed my time listening to the Genelec G3. It did it really did win me over. So I think in this case, it was about presence, the way the Genelec G3 presents vocals that, that sound human, that sound like they're all there in the room with you. So one of the first recordings that made me feel this way was this one, that Persuasions Sing the Beatles. Now this is a Chesky record, an audiophile recording done with no dynamic range compression, no processing or EQ live to two track, and just these men singing. It's a cappella. There are no instruments used on this record whatsoever. And they're just these men standing around the microphone singing, a stereo microphone. And yeah, coming out of the Genelex, that's what I got. How they were listening to each other, the way they were breathing, their phrasing, just the way they connected as human beings singing in a church, not in a sterile recording studio, but in a church, St. Peter's Church on 20th Street in Manhattan, where many Chesky records were done. The, the vibe in the air was, was wonderful for this session. And listening to this recording, it all came back. It all came back to me here in Brooklyn. So yeah, I was in. I was all in with the G3s at that point. But to really test their, uh, their stamina, I decided to play recordings that didn't sound good, starting with this Nuggets box set, a four CD box set. And this is music from the mid 60s to the late 60s, garage band music, before there was punk, punk music, psychedelic music, that recordings have, that have a lot of distortion, intentional and otherwise. Yeah, and these recordings basically suck as recording quality, but, the Genelex, just let it came through without editorializing, without overly highlighting the problems in the recordings, the distortions and just crap. But I was digging it. I was all in again. So, audiophile recording, yes. Crap recordings, no problem. Acoustic instruments on some other Chesky recordings. Oh, Noah Wall, this incredible singer, basically a bluegrass type singer. She's not very big as you know in stature in height, but what a big voice this woman belted out in these sessions She sang over her band with no you know PA or anything her on the microphone the same stereo microphone as the rest of the band and she was t Definitely audible. She had no problem singing louder than an entire band without any help from a PA or close miking or anything and it was, again, it was that sense of being there that I was getting from the Genelex. Because I think what, what's really going down here is the Genelex are truth tellers. They're telling you what is going down in the recording. That's it. And if the recording is your thing, I mean, if not just audiophile, but if you're playing recordings that you just love and you just want to hear them, uh, okay, sorry, more accurately, yeah, this would work. This would work very, very well. As I alluded to earlier, 
I was determined in, for this review to compare this active speaker against a passive speaker, the passive one being the ELAC Unify Reference, which is $1,200 a pair. It's actually a much larger speaker, three-way with a six-inch woofer. It loomed large next to the tiny Genelec, but you know what, the Genelec's kind of held its own. Certainly on those recordings, with the vocals again, the vocals just sounded more complete, tonally right, tonally more natural over the Genelec than the ELAC. Yeah, the ELAC did have its advantages in terms of bottom end Augusta. It was just more low end coming out of this much larger speaker. Yes, clearly that was the case. But in terms of those vocals that I just referred to, the vocals sounded more correct, more natural, more present over the Genelec than the ELAC. And that, yeah, this is good stuff. But you know, yeah, if you're the type of uh, person or audiophile for that matter, who needs a very small speaker of very high quality and you don't want to mess with other electronics and keep it as simple as possible, this speaker might be exactly what you're looking for. But continuing the com with the comparisons with the ELAC, the ELAC just sounded kind of a little more compressed, a little less life to it. And I don't mean exactly dynamics, I just mean it seemed more constrained than what I was getting out of the G3. The G3 just had this unflappable nature. I was also very impressed with this speaker's transparency. And in this, what I mean by transparency in this case is when I was playing like the Persuasions recording, the spaces between the, the vocalists were more um, dramatic. You could hear into the room more over the G3 than I could through the ELAC. The e ELAC seemed to smear it more and the G3 just had a more precise rendering of what was going down in the recording. That was nice. In the midst of all these sessions, I was playing mostly digital, mostly through the Oppo Blu-ray player CDs, but I was also playing vinyl with the Techniques turntable, that one right over there. And uh, I had just got this $6 copy of the first Chicago album, the Chicago Transit Authority with question 64 and 68, whatever. What a great record. Now I'd forgotten completely since it's been decades since I've owned that LP, uh, that it wasn't recorded in New York City. I think it was recorded in Chicago, Make, makes sense of course. And it was a much better sounding recording than it would have been in New York. And I mean, the, the layering of the horns and the bass, the bass sounded freaking great. The vocals, that record kicks butt. It's so good. I forgot how good that record was. And the G3 was just lighting up, especially on the brass, which is, you know, can turn nasty and hard but not on this, there was great sound, great layering to it. So if you're into Chicago, but somehow missed this first one, check it out, stream it, whatever. But the vinyl is the one that really, really blew me away. Yeah, big time. Forgot, another forgotten album on, on vinyl was this one, this Bruce Springsteen, The Ghost of Tom Joad. And this is from 1995. It's all acoustic or mostly acoustic. And you know what? This is as close to an audiophile recording I think that Bruce Springsteen has ever done. It sounds really, really good. The vocals, the acoustic instruments. Wow, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous recording. So yeah, you know, Bruce is a great musician and he's made a lot of wonderful music in his life, but recording quality, eh, not so much. But in any case, this one sounded freaking amazing. And uh, the warmth of this acoustic recording was just so well rendered over the G3. Also noteworthy was there was no listening fatigue coming from this speaker to me. I, I had very long listening sessions because I was just digging it so much. And I just kept playing more and playing more and playing more. And I kept playing that it got to be really late, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. So I was playing it at quieter and quieter and quieter levels. And the sound really held up. And that's a rare trick for a speaker as small as this one's. Oh, and the bass. In case you were wondering, so Steve, can that little thing make any bass at all? Yeah, absolutely. It was going down to the high 40s, 50 hertz range with real control. So it wasn't just like one note thumpy bass or anything. No, it was very, very tuneful, very pitch defined, but deep, surprisingly deep. 
not as deep as I was getting out of the ELAC uh, Unify reference, but for a little thing, yeah. I can't imagine that most people that buy this speaker, at least for two channel use, uh, would, would add a subwoofer, unless you're into EDM or really bass heavy music. But for most music genres, I think the bass coming out of these speakers in appropriately sized rooms would be more than adequate. <laughs> okay, Steve, so what do you really think? I think the Genelec G3 far, far exceeded my expectations for a very small active speaker. Now, comma, I'm not Mr. Active Speaker. I do not promote or generally like the sound of active speakers. And yet this one, the G3, I was smitten. I just, I kept wanting to listen to it. Now that is the highest compliment as a reviewer I can possibly make about a product I'm reviewing because I turn through a lot of stuff and it's always on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. But this one, I just kept wanting to play it, playing vinyl, playing digital. It all sounded surprisingly good. And I keep thinking, but wait, it's supposed to be revealing of, of faults in recordings. And it was, but not in a way that irritated me. Maybe that's the thing that just, yeah, that was the surprise. That was the big takeaway is that I could just listen and still enjoy the music. So yeah, if you need a small speaker for a small to mid-sized room that is on that side of neutral, accurate, and has this kind of uh, appeal of having a pro sound speaker, yeah, I think the Genelec G3 deserves serious consideration. And speaking of serious consideration, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. This comes from Ben. He's 38 years old. He lives in Hull, Massachusetts, and he loves the show. Thank you, Ben. He actually has two systems in the living room. He has Golden Ear Triton 2 Plus speakers, Macintosh MA5200 integrated amplifier, an Analog Works Turntable 1 with a Jelco 750D arm and an Ortofon 2M Black cartridge. DAC is a Holo Spring. Streamer is a Pi 2AES. In, in the office, he's running KEF LS50 speakers partnered with an SVS SB3000 subwoofer. The power amp is an XTZ Edge A2. And let's see, oh, there's a headphone amplifier, actually two headphone amplifiers, topping A90 and an XDU TA20. And the DAC is an RME ADI2 FS. Pretty nice stuff. Thanks, Ben. We are back, and my name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am, yes, I am, I am the audiophiliac, no doubt about it. And uh, at this point, I'm supposed to say something like, yeah, if you like my channel, please subscribe. Please like it. Give me a like and subscribe. That really helps. Oh, and then there's the Patreon. You know, the very, very hip people, they know. They know about the Patreon, and so can you. And you can find it at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And there is a link to that in the description. But I will point out, and I don't say this enough, my patrons, when they email questions and things, things they want to know about, I make every effort to respond as soon as possible, usually the same day or a day or so later. So anyway, that might, that might tip you in that direction. Anyway, just saying. And by the way, I have a new design for my t-shirts and I even made a poster. My first audiophiliac poster, I'll put up some of that right now. It's different. The others are more, let's say, normal, traditional merch type products. This is me being a bit artier with my audiophiliac design. So if that appeals to you, check it out. Please do. And that can be found in the merch, in, also directly below this video for the link to Teespring. That's where the t-shirts live and that's where they're, they're sold through is Teespring. And now, and now I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>